Hey everybody! Welcome back to Northern Lion Plays The Binding of Isaac Rebirth. Let's random here. I'm actually feeling like really good, and by really good I mean not completely shitty for the first time in like nearly two weeks. It's crazy. I mean, you know, other people have, have bigger problems quite clearly. 8, sorry, E80Y3QFD. You know, I'm not trying to say that coming down with a, a one-off infectious disease is necessarily the worst thing that can happen, but good lord. My throat for like the past two weeks has basically felt like I've been gargling like hot fucking volcanic ash. And I don't mean catch him. Oh, that is actually 12 cents and a troll bomb which allowed me to get that key. Pretty extraordinary. Now, I'm no huge fan of uh, Eden. But there is a... Sorry, I, know I am a huge fan of Eden. Don't, you know, don't take that out of context. I'm no huge fan of Eve. Or EVOO The Search for Eden. Or EVOO the cooking oil. Now, one of those is just not true. I love extra virgin olive oil. It's, um, you know, nice cooking oil with a high smoke point that doesn't imbue uh, too much flavor, but sometimes, you know, that can be a good thing. Anyway, let's move along here. If we can get into the Horror of Babylon state, which is looking like it might be... Oh, jeez. I got pretty lucky to not get hit there. It's looking like it could be super likely. In fact... Here's what I'm thinking. Let's go in here. You got a spirit heart for sale? Of course you have a spirit heart for sale. It's the first uh, freaking floor. Actually, what we should do here, as we have been doing very good things with our uh, donation machine, is completely reverse that. And we will get up to 17 cents where we will buy Mom's Key, which will give us two more keys, as well as the effects of Mom's Key, which are just extraordinary. So, I, I thought about like walking into this fire and then buying the spirit heart. I guess I'd, I always make this mistake. Let's leave like one fire open so I can actually go back for it. But I figure, you know, when when mom's key shows up early, you got to take a chance at it, right? It's like maybe you're maybe you're uh, 17 years old and you get like a recording contract with a major label uh, record deal or something like that. You go, oh, but I've got my physics, uh, my physics final is next week. You know, education is very important. But if you end up going to, you know, you give it a try, maybe you'll end up having the greatest life you ever and never could have possibly imagined. And if you end up, you know, having a shitty recording career and not doing that well for yourself and burning out on it, well, you can always just go back to high school when you're 19. All things considered, that's not though, you know, you might say, but all my friends graduated when they were 18. That makes no, no difference, man. No difference at all. When I was in, um my undergraduate degree, which is just a fancy way of saying the first degree that you get outside of high school. Uh, I was 17, there was a dude that ended up being my lab partner for some stuff, and, and he was 27. And at the time, we were like, man, this dude is ancient. But when you think about it, it's really not that big of a deal. I mean, I'm like, I'm almost 27 now. And sometimes I'm like, well, I could go back to school. Yeah, you, I mean, you're probably going to be one of the oldest people in your class, but, you, you know, depending on what you're taking, there's going to be, like, 30, 40, 50, 60-year-olds in there as well. You know, better to, if, if you don't like where you're at in your life and you have the resources to change it, better to, to do it as soon as possible, you know? Sure, the best time to do something would have been yesterday, but, you know, you can't do something yesterday. The only way you can do it is to do it today. Lost contact. We can still hurt ourselves by going into this curse room, which I think is a good idea. No, 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 okay, thank God. If that bomb had hit us, it wouldn't have actually killed us, but it would have put myself in a position where it would have been very easy to get killed. Yeah, we would have had to really rush for that door and get out as soon as possible, which it's probably not too likely that it would have worked, but it could have. And now we're in a great position. We got Horror of Babylon, Shielded Tears, and, um, I mean, Mom's Key is not immediately probably that useful, but if we can get a lot of chests, then it's perfect. And, and if we can get a Guppy's Collar... Oh, I should have bought a bomb instead. We could have made this work, but... Um, if we can get a... Not a Guppy's Collar, a Guppy's Tail... And, uh... A lot of keys as well, then we should be able to basically make Mom's Key into, like, the ultimate consumable generator. Which, oh, consumables are that big of a deal. And true, you're not totally wrong, except that consumables, you know, are the gate for, uh... A lot of, like, real item progress, like item rooms and shops. They can also contain spirit hearts of their own, or pills that become attribute upgrades, etc, etc. Of course we're gonna get Little Steven here, there was no chance that we were gonna get Big Steven. That's an item that only exists in fairy tales and sea shanties. Curse of the Unknown can be a little risky, but I think I'm probably gonna end up being fine. 
If my, uh, if my voice still sounds a little bit weird, this is gonna sound like the ultimate complaining, but I think I drank so much orange juice, and I know, I know that, you know, vitamin C after you're ill, it doesn't really make it, ooh, uh, faster to recover, I know we already get, like, 200% of our daily vitamin C recommendation if we eat, like, a carrot or something like that, um, However, I normally just drink water and coffee and occasionally tea. When I'm sick, I'm like, fuck it, I'm gonna have some orange juice. I got a good excuse to, to drink some, uh, some stuff that may or may not necessarily be that great for me. So I drank a lot of orange juice, and now I got a freaking, like, canker sore on my tongue from all the acid. And it's making it a little difficult to speak here. I'm just a complete mess, aren't I? So for once, I actually managed to sneak out of this room without getting hit. Which is amazing, and we should be able to access that tinted rock, and that worked out fantastically. And there's another tinted rock up here. I hope that gets it. I wanted to put it here so it would actually blow up the, um... The kind of protection that these guys had over here. And, of course, with Mom's Key, it did some extraordinarily good things for us. Whatever. We got hit once, we also picked up, like, a Spirit Heart. Oh, that's pretty good. We picked up a Spirit Heart, several keys, a little bit of money there. Um, that's that's mom's key in action. An early mom's key is rare, but extremely valuable if you can swing it. Monstro's Law is it's coming back in full effect a little bit, isn't it? We never really um, got over Monstro's Law, but Monstro's Law never really got over us either. So after we finish this off, we have to remember we have two HP. Every deal with the devil is going to be worth one red heart. Uh, we don't have Curse of the Blind anyway, so I'll be able to see what the deals are. But we want to make sure we're at 0 or 1 HP. So we want to trade away at least 1 HP. Now 2 HP. Uh, yeah, we want to trade away 2 HP, and there's, thankfully... I mean, we could trade away 3 if we wanted to. Maybe I will. I, I know I have a decent amount of Spirit Hearts. And, um... Satanic Bible is a great item. To have for the future. In fact, I would I would probably classify this as a one run right now, and that's probably not that much of a surprise to you, to be honest, because this is a a really really above average payout, let's say. So what I'm thinking for the rest of this area, um, I I would love like one HP from you, but no more. Maybe just the spirit heart. Okay, well that's one HP. That's perfect. Are we still in horror Babylon state? Yes, we are. Uh, I'm gonna go to the curse room, and then I'm gonna come back and try to buy a spirit heart from our shop, maybe? And we just got contract from below there. The Roomba's trying to break in. Just ignore it. If you ignore it, it's almost as if it's not really there. So, we'll pick up another spirit heart here, and that was a pretty extraordinary floor. I mean, Headless Baby, Ghost Baby, not that amazing. Satanic Bible, amazing. Um, for seven cents, we could get a lot of consumables here, and there's no spirit heart for sale, so let's just use it, and I think that's actually totally fine. Maybe I should try to... It's, I could have bought the, the battery charge, which would have been, like, functionally the same as the spirit heart, almost, but, uh, whatever. What's done is done. What was I gonna say? Oh yeah, except for those like those two items, we picked up a staggering amount of very useful stuff here. I don't think we need to use a bomb to get a key. We could have used a bomb to get three cents as well. I don't think that really matters. I'm thinking like contract from below mom's key is going to be disgustingly good for us. And truth be told, we actually didn't need the spirit heart. We are doing fantastically on HP considering how much we gave away on the last floor. And that's one of the very few times in Rebirth that Judas's tongue has actually been worthwhile for me. In theory, it's such a good trinket, and in vanilla, I used it pretty frequently when it showed up. However, with the newfound uh, deals with the devil that give you red chests or, you know, the Krampus fights apparent, uh, you know, inability to go 10 seconds without showing up. I don't know if Judas' tongue is necessarily worth less than it used to be, but I seem to anecdotally not have nearly as many, like, useful kind of encounters f from it. Um, Teleportation is pretty bad. The world's card. We'll take a couple of those. I really don't think we need a magician card. Like, I'm not trying to get too high on uh, my own farts here, but I think I can probably aim at enemies when I am doing, uh, you know, a lot of rate of fire, or my rate of fire is high, and the enemies are largely pretty much stationary, and the magician card sometimes causes me to miss anyway. Now, if you want to give me Spoonbender, fine by me. 
I won't be offended at your uh, insistence of giving me one of the best, you know, synergy bases in the game. Why don't we go, I mean, we've already been to one item room. We kind of have a, a pretty straight shot at the valuable areas of this floor. I think we should kind of just go for them. And we might be able to get that pill. Whether or not we want to is another question altogether. We have enough bombs to try this, at least. That actually went totally fine. I'll use it right now. It's not necessarily 100% optimal, but it, it was pretty close. It was like 80% optimal. Uh, very glad I did that, of course. Who needs to be able to see where you're going? Not me. And we'll go to our curse room as well. It's a little risky, but there was also a tinted rock there that made it completely not risky. And a guppy item would go a long way, but uh, let's be honest. We probably don't deserve a guppy item. We've already gotten, like, two of the best items in the game. And the Whore of Babylon state is active. Two runes. Book of Secrets, man? Come on. Well, now we're even. We got two good items and two useless items. Oh, never mind. Ah! <laughs> I ah, I rerolled uh, I rerolled Satanic Bible by accident. That was a genuine scream of terror right there. All right, you know sometimes I get on Reddit and I see people that are like, "Man, I can't even watch Northern Lion, man." Like, sure he's funny, but he fucking sucks at the game. And then I get put on my you know, tweed coat, and I go, Oh, excuse me, I suck at the game? What's your win streak, squire? Like, you know, I'm sitting up here banging out 15 win streaks, and then I do something like that, and I go, Wait a minute, they're right, I suck. <laughs> but I hope it's... I hope it's entertaining at this point, right? You know? Maybe maybe people don't like to cheer for the... Uh, the, the sports team that never makes a mistake. They like to cheer for the sports team that has the one dude that, like... You know, has some kind of personality disorder that manifests itself in an interesting way. Charismatic, hopefully. and But still, you know, holds the fundamentals dear. So why am I... I, I took Brother Bobby largely because if BFF shows up, it's big. And we already have like 10 familiars. But I, I decided to save the Perthro rune just for the boss fights in case we get a deal with the devil. And, you know, we could use it on the shop as well if we wanted to. Not that I necessarily do right now. And uh, we'll see what we get here. Largely, that was just terrible. I basically moved right into it, but uh, I would uh, I would love to be able to reroll the deal with the devil. I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, like, I would love to get two HP and then three devil deals with Judas's tongue and have a Perthrow rune. Then I wouldn't feel so bad. That's a range upgrade. That might be worth rerolling. I know we have a passive item. Or, sorry, not a passive item. The opposite. We have an active item. So bad. In our shop. Or not in our shop. We do have an active item in our shop, but we also have an active item in our item room that was on the right side. So we may want to reroll that instead, because a range upgrade is like objectively at least good. Actually, we definitely want to reroll that, because we don't want to uh, pick up HP that would take us out of the Horror Babylon state. Probably. Alright. What do we got here? Magic Mushroom. I'll take it. I understand the concerns behind it. Uh, I guess the question becomes, what would we rather have? Teleport or Book of Secrets? And I guess the answer does end up being Book of Secrets. But it's not a slam dunk. <laughs> I can't believe I rerolled the wrong book, man. I mean, I can believe it, but I'm disappointed in myself is maybe the best way to put it. And we've lost Horror of Babylon State, but we've gained Magic Mushroom. I think that's... You just didn't... You didn't re-roll it? Is this... Oh, no, wait. I used the Magician card in there. Oh, my God. My brain is broken. So, uh... Yeah, I'm going to end the episode here. I'm not actually going to end the episode here. I'm just joking. But uh, it, there's no question. You know, we've had a number of pretty egregious mistakes. Hopefully, we can pull out a win regardless. I'm gonna... How much longer can I play this but I'm sick card, you know? I've got a canker sore on my tongue. Sorry I failed my math test, professor. I've got a canker sore. Sorry the bridge I built crumbled on its first day of use. I had a canker sore when I designed it. 
you know, I, I don't know how much water that excuse holds. But it kind of doesn't matter if we win anyway, you know? Everyone's, uh, we're all just, we're all just doing our best, man. We're all just doing our best. So how am I going to set this up so Robo Baby can actually deal some damage? That sort of worked. And then immediately did not. Okay. Man, it'd be great if we had Satanic Bible. That really would, uh, make that battery come to life, huh? Oh, that's pretty good. And this is what annoys people the most from my, uh, from my, you know, comprehensive readings of internet. Northern Lion has undue positive luck. I consider myself a log logical person, but he gets luckier more than average. I don't know, man. I think, uh, I think when you, when you film every, every game of this that you play, you know, you can't hide, you can't say, I get shit luck from time to time, because people will be like, whoa, look at that time you got a holy mantle after you gave away Satanic Bible like a dang fool. I, I, I don't have that luxury, but I think you probably, you know, if you look at the average person who plays out there, you're probably having, you know, the same kind of RNG on a consistent level. You know, if you take the sample size high enough. I don't think I've got any particular good luck, but I do think my good luck is on display, and when I do get good luck, like I did right there, I'm very thankful for it. I'm not trying to say it was my skill, rather that I think we all shared, to some extent, the same degree of luck. The book of luck is long and boring. That was my best uh, Stephen Merritt impression. Fuck you, Northern Lion! That song's by Peter Gabriel. It's from the Richard Gere, Jennifer Lopez classic, Shall We Dance? I don't think so. I think it's uh, I think it's a mid disc two track from the Magnetic Fields Magnum Opus triple disc collection, sixty nine love songs. I didn't even make that name up. That's how you know it's good. Let's head down to the next floor. Um, this coffee might be warm enough or cool enough to drink. Oh, that's good stuff. Curse of the Unknown doesn't scare me that much. Why even use the, what I use there, the world card, when we have the Book of Secrets. Or why use Book of Secrets when we have the world card? Whatever. So what I'm really hoping for here, um, well, let, let's talk about a couple of things. One thing I would like to make happen is have over five cents so that on the next floor, we'll go back for that secret room. So on the next floor, we have an arcade chance. In case we can't give away our HP on this floor, I would like to have an arcade chance so that we can maybe get an IV bag or at least temporarily put ourselves in the Horror Babylon state. Because Magic Mushroom is great, but I think it's it's almost a wash if we lose Horror Babylon state by taking Magic Mushroom and then never get back. Obviously, there's some other stats that come along with it, but the real goal is to take Magic Mush temporarily lose Horror Babylon State and then as soon as possible get back to it so that we really get the the effect of those like stacking multipliers. I had Holy Mantle so I figured we could probably afford to run over that. Um, another goal is to trade away HP on this floor if that's at all possible I would be very happy. We have two red hearts that's that's important to remember here. Where's the Robo Baby? Oh yeah right in the corner. Pretty much working as intended. There we go. With a little bit of, you know, kind of creative finagling here. That was really dumb of me. With a little bit of creativity, you can sort of get uh, Robo Baby into a position where it can do some stuff. Which is smart right there because I didn't want to be behind him anyway. Or I, I want to be behind him, but I can't get behind him there. This is a weird fight, man, because we have Nearsighted Friend, which is confusing me as to which ones are my eyes and which ones are the game's eyes. Or the, the peeps, or the bloat's eyes. And then we have our own creep with Headless Baby. And we have, uh, the creep from the bloat as well. Oh, but the creep from the bloat glows, Northern Lion. Ah, uh, that's very easy to tell at a glance out of my peripheral vision. You're right about that. I lost, like, half a spirit heart there. We got a range upgrade. And I had a feeling we might have the Krampus fight, which is why I was, uh kind of holding as a contingency that idea of spawning a blood bank on the next floor which would be hugely important. I would get rid of this uh, book of book of uh, secrets for IV bag for sure. But first, we're not going to have to worry about that because we have Krampus's head instead, which is probably a much better item. Doing fine on consumables though. As we backtrack, I'm going to take a sip of this coffee. 
I'm gonna make a beeline for the big room as quickly as possible so I can use Krampus's head but then have a uh, another charge for it ready by the time we go down to the next floor. Or we'll just use it right here, which is also probably just fine. Obviously, I want to go to the curse room on this floor. We won't get hurt for walking in. Holy Mantle, I think you got to give Holy Mantle a respect position in the top 10 items in the game. I don't even think that's controversial. I said it like, I know a lot of people aren't going to agree with me, but Wayne Gretzky is probably at least one of the top three hockey players of all time. For real, though. Lemieux played at a better points per game clip and also did it while having fucking Hodgkin's lymphoma, dog, still. And of course, you know, you got Gordie Howe and uh, Terry Sawchuck in there as well. But anyway, that's irrelevant. We could go on about that for days. However, um, oh, let's walk out, walk back in. Uh, it, it really is such a, a game winning item. Good enough that if you just got that as the loss, people would be like, how'd you die, man? So that was perfect. Nine lives, uh, a great item. We've got a chance of becoming Guppy, which is huge. And then in addition to that, we have uh, the Horror Babylon state has come back, which in addition to Magic Mushroom, gives us like a 1.5 times, then another 1.5 times damage multiplier. All right, well, I didn't really like that room anyway, to be honest with you. Boss Rush is definitely going to be off the table. We might as well be be smart about this and hit all of these rooms as we go onwards here. Um, normally, I, I still backtrack, maybe not 100%, depends on my goals. But we really, really have no excuse not to backtrack when we have Contract from Below and um, Mom's Key. Every time we, missed a we miss a chest drop, we're actually missing two chest drops, and we're missing chests that are like 1.5 times the payout of the average. So, it's, you know, we got a lot of multipliers going on on this run in a lot of, you know, varying different ways. I think I can go to that, uh, oh, that was, well, Holy Mantle, thank you, case in point. Um, I think I can go back to that mob trap room and take the pills. I just can't open the chest unless I want to fight enemies, which I might, honestly. You know, one one chest, again, is worth like 1.5 chests. It's not bad. Now, you might be saying, Northern Line, why don't you use uh, Krampus' head here? And that's because I worry about what our next room could possibly hold. And, you know, Chubb might take us a little while, although our damage is really good. But, uh, I would rather take a little while on one enemy than fucking forever on those enemies right there. Smart Fly is a great item. You don't need me to talk about that, probably. Uh, it's well regarded within the community. Just really, really good. Yeah, Black Candle's good. Uh, that's a range upgrade pill, which is completely unnecessary, I'd say. Let's head back this way. And it looks like... I mean, we don't really need to spawn a Blood Bank anymore. But if you gave me the opportunity to get an IV bag instead of Krampus's head, I might be inclined to take it. You might be saying that's ridiculous. Krampus's head is a four-pronged laser beam of death that destroys everything in its wake. IV bag hurts you and gives you some money. But there's something about the peace of mind for knowing you can stay in that Whore of Babylon state that is uh, it's extremely important for me. Maybe not for everybody, but I, I respect IV Bag a lot more in Rebirth than I did in Vanilla. Depths Part 2. Yeah, uh, I, I really can't fathom a situation in which this would not be worth it. Well, yes I can. If we had two Red Heart containers, and that would have caused us to lose Horror Babylon State. Still, on a mathematical level, that one's a no-brainer. Uh, we probably didn't actually need to use Krampus's head there, but we did use it. What's my dream item right now? Let's ignore uh, bullshit like Polyphemus, Quad Shot, etc, etc. That stuff is, that's all, you know, smoke and mirrors, you know? High damage, who needs it? What we really need right, right now is BFF. BFF would be an enormous help, and it would just be hilarious. So if we can somehow get it, and I'm not saying we deserve it. We've already had a pretty incredible amount of good RNG. I'll take number one. Does it uh, lower our range immediately? Actually, our range is still really good. Yeah. Making me not really regret not getting that range up pill. So I think we'll definitely buy all these and then we'll donate some money. I took like maybe seven cents, 10 cents maximum from our donation machine earlier in the run. So I'm feeling like this is probably A-OK. -okay. We're maybe like above, uh, above what we started at. Nuns have a pickup. 
Uh, not necessarily extraordinary with six room charge items, but uh, the number one pickup is great. We already have good damage, so one of the things we're going to be most concerned about is, you know, firing as often as possible. And in addition to that, our range has, like, completely been compensated for. That was Amnesia, so to take Lemon Party is, like, a real positive here. Yeah, in spite of my idiocy, and it really was a dumb mistake to lose a uh, Satanic Bible. In spite of that, we are not really at any considerable risk of losing this run. Even though our chances of becoming Guppy are low, 9 lives is a huge help. Krampus' head is a totally competent spacebar item. Um, yeah, we're way past boss rush here. Uh, but mostly it's just our damage. Our damage is incredible. And as long as I don't absentmindedly kind of take too many HP upgrades, we're going to be absolutely fine. Again, if we're already past boss rush, unfortunately for me, because I love to rush through the game, and when I'm not playing on camera, I oftentimes go a lot faster with negative results or you know negative returns or consequences for that rushing but um unfortunately for me there's really no excuse not to go to every single room which in, you could argue is actually a good thing <laughs> oh right i forgot that we have holy mantle as well like the best defensive item in the game so that helps out a lot i'm not gonna lie about that golden chest with bob's brain as far as I'm concerned, Bob's Brain is good, and Bob's Brain Holy Mantle is even better. I basically consider this... I, I'm so close to saying something I'll regret. I would almost objectively consider Bob's Brain a good item. But I think it actually is quite subjective. And that's fine. It happens. I can't really play that that often. I know I didn't pick it up, by the way. I'll go back for it. Oh, shit, we actually did just become Guppy. And I think Guppy's head over Krampus' head is a totally cool decision here. And if it wasn't already stellar... This is... Of course this happens on a run where I'm like, I don't think I get that lucky. Look, this run is that lucky. You can't use this as evidence of long-term luck or, you know... Just because you pick a... No I say pick a number between 1 and 1,000 and you get it right. That doesn't mean you're the best player of that game in history. You know, shit like that does happen from time to time. But, I'll admit, this is pretty absurd. So we... Joker? Two of spades. Even better, maybe, because we got Guppy's Tail. That's the other thing, Guppy's Tail, I asked for earlier in the run. We have... Oh, we can fly, right. We have, a uh, Mom's Key. Mom's Key plus a lot of keys plus Guppy's Tail. I mean, I'm not saying that it, it's gonna give us the craziest payouts of all time, but I'm thinking from a consumable standpoint, we're basically fine. Uh, we already are basically fine here. That's a magician card. Don't get bent out of shape that I'm not picking it up. Now, we'll leave Lemon Party behind and, and take the Emperor just because it's, uh, well, it is better for our situation for sure. And again, like, I'm kind of like letting Holy Mantle just eat that first Bob's brain hit because it, it doesn't really seem like it's going to matter that much. Whoa, I am uh, now all of a sudden not too bent out of shape over the fact that I forgot to take Satanic Bible with me. Turns out that this situation was pretty much, this seed, I should say, was pretty much preordained to succeed regardless. Just looking. Oh, was there? There's a tinted rock wedged over on the far right side there. One of the very few uh, damage ups that we have not gotten is Small Rock. Small Rock and Cricket's Head are still uh, eluding us, but with uh, a lot of golden chests, I would expect that. Cricket's head has, you know, probably a decent chance to show up, and then Small Rock it has been a little elusive lately, but you never know. Bob's brain is active here, and now it is not active because I got hit by it, but that's why we got, uh, that's why we got Holy Mantle, or that's why we're very happy to have Holy Mantle. That's not why we got Holy Mantle. We got Holy Mantle due to, you know, a, a random between zero and number of items in the game function that returned something that was very much in our favor, and I'm appreciative of that. Alright, you guys stay out of the way. You can either lead, follow, or get out of the way, and I've got a, a very good suggestion for what I would, you know, like you to do, and what I think is probably going to be best for your personal well-being as well, but it's, it's your choice in the end, I suppose. We're actually killing a lot of these rooms so quickly that Bob's brain 
sometimes, not that time obviously, but sometimes doesn't get a chance to fire. Uh, we, we had to leave and re-enter that room just so we could go to the curse room for free, so I figured we might as well just go fight that room. Cricket's head, Cricket's head, Cricket's head, Cricket's head, Cricket's head. Infamy. That's still really good. <laughs> as if it wasn't enough to have Holy Mantle, the, the infamy pickup is just extraordinary. It's now going to make it very, very difficult for us to take damage, which is, you know, what I like to hear. I'm going to be honest and say that we probably don't really need four range up pills at this point, but I guess I'm appreciative of it regardless. And bombs are key, I'm not super thrilled with, but we haven't really seen any golden chests anyway. And when we do see golden chests, we're going to expect them to pay out with, um, with more keys unless they have an item in them, which is, you know, also really good. So we're up to 14 keys, and we're also up to about the end of this floor, one way or the other. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Mom's key, man. Just basically as close as you can get to a straight-up guarantee that you're never going to run into key problems. We're going to be fighting uh, the bloat again. This one went a little differently than the last one, though. I forgot we had Curse of the Blind. Uh, so let's take this first. No, let's go in here first. And there is a one-hard deal. For mom's knife, okay, that ruins Guppy to some extent. And that's what I wanted to do, is do that just to make sure we didn't accidentally get saddled with 2 HP. In case that one deal was just red chests or something. Uh, so, I mean, the, the damage that we're going to do now is going to be incredible, there's no question about that. I'm a little disappointed to be losing out on um, our, our synergies there and probably not be creating as many flies, but, you know, it is fair to say that also... We're going to be, be doing such insane damage to enemies that it's functionally not going to matter that much, and that's true as well. Also, I had no flipping control over whether or not Mom's Knife showed up. There was a Curse of the Blind. Well, you could have used your Perthro Rune on the Deck of Cards on the Caves Part 1, and then that might have turned it into Black Candle, and then you could have seen what it is, and then you could have not taken it. All right, you straw man that I'm making up in my head right now. That's, I mean, that's technically true, but also quite ridiculous. I mean, I might as well open it. I don't mind fighting bosses at this point. Uh, we stand a pretty good chance to get through this without getting hit at all for a variety of different reasons. Like, this is the hardest for us. And then we got Loki, who will die in, like, one hit. One way or the other. And then we got uh, Chubb, who's even easier, I think. A little bit less mobile for us. Why not use uh, Emperor? More well-suited for the Cathedral is my uh, my typical reasoning. If we were on Curse of the Lost, I might consider it. Just because I hate dealing with amnesia, but... In this situation, it's not really that big of a deal, because pretty much every enemy we come across is going to die in one hit anyway. That's going to be true for the rest of the game. But, uh... You know, we might as well... Oh my god, we lost like 80 flies there. What? No Guppy's hairball? Bad luck, man. I'm being a little facetious. Okay, good. Not that good. Not that good. Two golden chests in a row. Well, there's a spirit on now. Oh, good. Some Skype messages. Let's head over to Northern Lion Skype. Who's gonna message me today? Do you wanna play Brawlhalla on the stream? I think I'll consider that. That game's pretty good, actually. I will admit, please, Skype, I will admit that, um, first couple, uh, well, not even the first couple of times, like, literally for the first, like, 15 minutes that we played Brawlhalla on that stream a couple weeks ago, I was like, this is just kind of like an inferior Super Smash Bros. But once I kind of got the, the meta down, I'm not saying it's better than Super Smash Bros, and it quite clearly, you know, draws from Smash Bros as an extraordinarily obvious inspiration. But the game is actually really, really fun. It just... It, it, I think it's it's almost got like a PlayStation All-Stars thing going on, where initially you're like, this is Smash Bros, but worse. But if you stick with it, and I didn't actually play PlayStation All-Stars, so I don't know if this is true, but if you stick with Brawlhalla, it, it has its own charms that, uh, that make it interesting as well. I don't know if it's going to spawn the same kind of competitive scene. If you're confused about what Brawlhalla is, it's a... Uh, Currently in early access, uh, it's going to be free to play when it comes out, but because of the way Steam does free to play stuff, it's in uh, basically like buy in to play the game and you get a founder's pack with it. 
They don't allow early access free to play stuff on Steam, which is weird, but I don't know. I guess we'll Emperor Card right now. And it's a it's a up to four player fighting game with online netcode that actually works pretty well. There have been some times where I've lagged a little bit, but it, it largely, and by largely, I mean like 95% of the time is fine. I mean, I played Smash Bros. Uh, online on Wii U a decent amount as well, and there's a, there's a pretty considerable amount of lag at that point. Or maybe it's just more noticeable because uh, it's a fighting game, so the timing of your inputs is extremely important. The thing I don't like about Brawlhalla is that I feel like all of the characters are basically like... I can't take SMB Super Fan as much as I would like to here. Man, BFF would have been so fun, but anyway. Um, I don't like that all of the characters are basically just like, we have this many characters to have, like, this many permutations of our weapons. <laughs> like, like there's one character who has, like, uh, Rocket Spear and Hammer. Next character, Rocket Spear and Spear. Next character is, like, Guns, Rocket Spear. Guns, Hammer. Like, it, it's basically like they just went through, like, a permutation table and we're like we're gonna have a character for each one of these I would rather people might disagree with me about this but I would rather have like four characters and just have the opportunity to change my primary and secondary into whatever I want if all the characters are gonna be the same anyway but um, the that game is actually pretty fun the the thing that's a real shame about it is the way that Steam does early access and I mean these words are both loaded with negative connotations as is but the way Steam does early access, free-to-play stuff, forcing people to buy in for a Founders Pack, people are like, I'm not paying $90 for this! And you're like, well, you don't have to. Like, you you never have to do anything, but, like, if you just wait till it comes out, it'll be free. You're not gonna buy it anyway if it's in early access. I, You know, I've spent some time on the internet. This game looks like the best game ever made. Too bad it's early access. I bought H1Z1 against my better judgment, and now I've poisoned the well for myself and everybody else. You lucky so-and-sos. All right, we're going to finish this runoff here. I would explore more, but I really, really dislike uh, Curse of the Lost, man. And I'm not trying to say that Steam Early Access is a great platform. There's lots of shit on it that has poisoned the well. But there's a lot of great games on Steam Early Access as well, man. Infinifactory. I've been playing a ton of Nuclear Throne lately. Captain Forever Remix, like, you know, don't let a couple of bad uh, zombie themes, open world survival sandbox apples spoil the whole bunch for everybody else. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you guys joined, enjoyed the episode. I hope you joined the episode in whatever way you wanted to. Thanks for watching. And, uh, if you enjoyed it, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. And, of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. But for now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.